Hi, I'm Miranda Wright, and this is day 62 of our 120-day Upper Room Prayer Campaign. And today, we're going to pray against the spirit of envy. Envy is one of the most cunning tactics of the enemy. And I assure you, my friend, that it is a spirit, and it is the head of a demonic family that will allow many other spirits in if you give it place. Several times in the book of Numbers, it mentions a spirit of jealousy. And it says that when the spirit of jealousy came upon the man, he became jealous. And of course, jealousy and envy are two sides of the same coin. Though they are not exactly the same, they are definitely part of the same demonic family. In that jealousy is something that comes upon you because of something that belongs to you. For example, a man can become jealous for his wife. And if he feels that there is a threat that something might come to steal away his wife, then he may move in jealousy. However, envy comes from the other end in that when you see something that does not belong to you, but you want it, you are envying. Therefore, if your heart is lusting after or desiring to steal away that other man's wife, then it is envy. People will envy over many things, over position, over title, over, over finance, over material things, over relationships. But probably more than anything else, they will envy over the attention that somebody else is getting that they desire for themselves. So in this manner, do we see that jealousy does have its place? That's why it's okay when the scripture says that God is a jealous God. He is jealous for us as a husband is for his bride. But at the same time, there is a spirit of jealousy that rises up in us, causing us to move in pride or in hatred or in anger or in error. Because that when the evil spirit of jealousy overtakes a person, they can act out irrationally over things that were never actually being threatened. It actually kind of comes into play with the spirit of fear. But envy is when we want something that has not been given to us by God. And according to scripture, it comes only by the influence of the enemy. And so my friend, from this day forward, anytime a spirit of envy begins to rise up within you towards anyone for any reason, you need to treat it as an evil spirit and rebuke it. Speak to it, say, I don't agree with you and kill that thing at the root. Don't let it get in because once it does, it will open the door to nearly every other sin. It is such a cunning tactic of the enemy. The enemy uses it to divide families. He uses it to divide friendships. And more than anything else, he uses it to divide ministries because the spirit of envy will cause you to compete with those who you are called to cooperate with. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we are called to be one body led by the Holy Spirit that we must all humble ourselves to him, hear his voice and direction and do our part in obedience that we might all function together as one body led by one spirit to accomplish the will of the father. And so anytime within a congregation or a body, we see a lack of cooperation, then we can rest assured that it is because there is more than one spirit doing the leading. And one of those spirits is going to always be envy. This is a tactic of the enemy that we've got to learn how to see, how to recognize, how to call out and how to cast out because this spirit poisons territories. You can think of a congregation or a body or even a town or an area as a fruitful vineyard. And you can see many different trees in this orchard all bearing good fruit. And within that congregation, there is a seed planted, a little root of envy. And as that envy begins to spring up, it will speak in one person's ear. Oh, because maybe they wanted that position. Maybe they want it to be on the stage. Maybe they want it some attention. Maybe they want it their girlfriend or their boyfriend. Maybe they want it their ministry. Maybe they want it their material possessions, a car, a house. Maybe they want it their job. Whatever the envy, it will drive them to start to see everything that the enemy is telling them is wrong with that person and they will begin to speak it out. Now they've moved into gossip. And because they've poisoned that other person with that gossip, that person is now moving in hatred towards that person or bitterness or unforgiveness. And so now that once fruitful tree is being choked out by this branch of gossip that sprung up from this root of envy. 
And then on the other side, they're speaking into somebody else's ear about all the reasons that that person shouldn't even be in ministry or on that stage or with that person. But maybe the one they're speaking to now, they care about that person. And so now there's offense and strife and they're fighting and they're arguing back against each other. And so now you've got a branch of offense. You've got a branch of strife and it's choked the fruitfulness out of this tree. And it branches out to contention, to division. Now you've got brother pitted against brother, different people taking sides. Oh, well, they're in my family. So now I'm on their side. Oh, that's my church. So now I'm on their side. Now you've got contention and division and every evil work that has sprung up from this root of envy. And it is choking out branch by branch, tree by tree, the fruitfulness of this once fruitful vineyard. My friend, envy is an enemy that we've got to learn how to see because we think it's not that bad, but it branches out into so many things. It's like a little demon that gets in the ear. And once we agree with it, he gets in our heart and then he begins to speak all these other things to us. And when we agree with those things, with the bitterness, he opens the door and lets that family member in and he closes it. And once they speak and it brings us into hatred, they open that door and it lets another spirit in. And then when they speak, it causes us to bring division among the brethren. And then it opens the door and lets that little spirit in. And then maybe somebody calls us out on it and And so they start to speak to us again and we move in pride and we open the door and we let that spirit in. And now we've got to start to lie to cover up the fact that what we're saying and doing is not right. And so we open the door and we let that little spirit in. And it continues and continues until we're moving an offense and entitlement. And my friend, this thing can continue further and further and further down the road till it gets all the way to murder if we let it. It depends on where we stop it. So I say stop it at the root. Learn to recognize the spirit of envy. This thing is so poisonous. I did a very in-depth lesson on this a few years ago that goes fully into the tactics of this spirit, this demonic family and all the branches thereof. I will link that lesson up in the description of the podcast video of this prayer podcast because that I will not have time today to go fully into depth like I did in that lesson. So if you want more information, you can go to the description, click that link and listen to the entirety of the message. But I'm telling you, my friend, that we've got to learn how to see this thing because it will divide families. It will divide relationships. It will divide marriages. But more than anything else, it seeks to divide the body of Christ. So I'm here today to remind you, my friend, that there is no competition between lighthouses. I want you to get this vision, this image in your mind. If you have two lighthouses on a dark shore trying to light the way for boats to make it in safely, can there be too much light? Is there ever going to be competition between the lighthouses? No, of course, light cannot compete with itself. Therefore, if there is competition in the heart of a minister at all, then I am telling you with all a surety that you are not in a ministry you are in a business because only businesses have competition and the people in that congregation are not converts they are customers the true body of christ does not compete with itself it cooperates with itself perfectly joined together following the leading of one spirit the holy spirit if there is competition then someone is following another spirit and i assure you somewhere in there it is being manipulated at the root by envy That spirit of envy divides and draws away from the whole unto itself with an agenda to promote itself and glorify itself. The Holy Spirit draws in, teaches, sets ablaze, and then sends out to spread with an agenda to glorify God. Now, I understand as a pastor, you all know I've been in ministry my whole life, that that there comes a point sometimes where you want to truly, with a genuine heart, protect your flock. And so sometimes what could be perceived as competition really was meant to be protection because that you were trying to protect your flock from going out into false doctrine or being deceived or led astray by other ministries who you know were not walking in true righteousness. And I understand that. But my friend, we've got to understand that we cannot control control. It is not our flock. It is his. We've got to fast and pray and fight for them. We've got to be willing to instruct them and teach them in righteousness. The Lord brings them in. We feed them and then we return them back to him. We've got to allow him to bring them out. 
You know, Jesus said that one of the things that he hated about the churches that were doing things wrong in the book of Revelations was the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. And the doctrine of the Nicolaitans was a doctrine of control. They would not allow their people to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. They determined what they had to do to walk in the faith. They had a spirit of control over these people. And Jesus said, I hate it. We've got to allow our people to be free, to be used by the Holy Spirit as he sees fit. And I find the best way to protect them from the counterfeit is to give them a clear understanding and revelation of the truth. Teach them how to hear from God for themselves. Lay out the word of God so that they will always know what does not come into alignment with it. For a while, my husband worked at a bank and they didn't try to teach them how to recognize every single counterfeit bill that is in existence because there are so many. And even if they could learn every single one, the enemy would just create a new one that they would now not recognize. So instead of trying to teach them how to recognize everything that was false. Instead, they showed them how to recognize the one that was real. And once they knew how to recognize what were the telltale marks that identified this as the real currency, then they always knew what was false when it didn't line up with the truth. So I'm telling you ministers, you cannot control the people to protect them from the false. You do them a better service by giving them a strong foundation of the truth that they might always recognize what does not line up with the word of God and then allow them to be sent out to go and spread that truth themselves because that's what we have been called to do. Light is never afraid of the darkness. Truth does not fear the lie. We've got to be willing to disciple. In our church, we encourage our people to go out and be used by God, even if that takes them into another church, because that we have taught them how to hear God's voice. Their eyes have been opened to the truth of God's word. They can discern for themselves what is counterfeit and what is real. And so I give this as instruction and encouragement for those in ministry who have moved sometimes into control because of fear fear because you were only trying to protect your babies. So I do understand that sometimes it is an attempt to protect, but I can tell you most assuredly that the majority of the times that control comes to keep the body divided and to prevent churches or even people from within a congregation from functioning together in unity, it is because of the division that has been caused by a spirit. And according to the Bible, where envy is, Soon there is strife and then contention and every evil work. I tell you again that the spirit of envy will let every other spirit in. So if you recognize it in your heart at any point, you better get before the Lord and get that thing out. Because it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. But the Bible says that it was because of envy that Saul turned against David. Someone who he had once loved became his enemy because of envy to the point that it drove Saul mad. Caused him to work against the will of God, to attack those who were favored by God, and to even take his own life in the end. All because of a root that began in envy. The Pharisees, according to the scripture, it says that because of envy, they sought to crucify Christ because of envy they killed their own king their own messiah the one they had been waiting for the very person who was coming to save them to set them free to give them life eternal they turned on him who was innocent they slandered they gossiped they lied they brought strife and contention and eventually murder because of a root that began in envy But even in this is the scripture very clear that Jesus died for them too. And though not all, there did come a point at which the Bible says that many of the Pharisees repented and believed that Jesus was the Messiah. So God, we pray right now for a heart of repentance. That if there has been any root of envy in us towards anyone for any reason, Lord, that you would pluck it out. That it not allow the enemy to speak in our ear and confuse what we hear anymore in the name 
of Jesus. Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 says, And now the works of the flesh, not the fruit of the Spirit. This is actually the opposite. Right before the fruit of the Spirit is mentioned. And of course we understand that Jesus says you know the tree by its fruit. And if it has the good fruit, then it's getting into the kingdom. And if it has the bad fruit, it's being cast into the fire. And so we understand that those fruits that are manifested are explained in the fruits of the Spirit. But we don't recognize what the bad fruits or that caused the trees to be cast into the fire. But right before the fruits of the spirit are listed, there is the fruits of the flesh that are manifested. So this is the evidence that was on those trees that it didn't have access to the right root. It didn't have the right spirit within it. There was another spirit. And so by the evidence of the fruit was the whole tree cast into the fire. It says now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, which according to scripture encompasses the use of drugs, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, and capitalized envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If you let envy into your heart, you are not being led of the Spirit of God and you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Minister of God, if you allow spirit of competition to enter your heart against any other ministry, Beware, the enemy is at the door. Deal with it, because envy will keep you out of the kingdom. This passage also continues to include a desire for vainglory. A desire for vainglory is a quick way for the spirit of envy to gain access. Because if we desire to be seen, then we will become envious of those who are. If we desire to be heard, then we will become envious of those who are. If we desire attention, then we will become envious of those who have it. If we desire acceptance, then we will become envious of those who have it. If we desire love, we will become envious of those who have it. That's why we have to learn to be complete in Christ to be satisfied that if he is all we have then he is all we need and we're okay with that we've got to learn how to be complete in Jesus James chapter 3 verse 13 says who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom but if ye have bitter envyings and strife in your heart glory not and lie not against the truth this wisdom descendeth not from above but is earthly and sensual and devilish he's saying don't even try to say that you're of God if there is any envy in your heart you are lying to yourself because envy only comes comes from the devil for where envying and strife is there is confusion and every evil work but the wisdom that is from above is first pure then peaceable then gentle and easy to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits which is love peace joy gentleness kindness temperance faith and self-control Without partiality, that means not being a respecter of person or caring more about this person or that. It is perfect, pure, unpartial, sacrificial love. No favoritism, racism, sexism, or esteeming others higher because of income or class, or esteeming anyone lower because of the lack thereof. And without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. The word of God says you will know them by their fruit. The fruits of righteousness or the fruits of the spirit. And the Bible says without righteousness we shall not see the Lord. We will not get into heaven. Only the righteous get into heaven. Only those who bear those peaceable fruits of righteousness. Because that is the proof that they are connected to a holy and righteous root. But if these fruits of the flesh begin to manifest, then my friend, you better get on your face before the king because it is evidence that you are drawing from another spirit. 
when we allow envy to creep in, it will lead to slander, gossip, hatred, malice, division. It will actually even cause you to speak curses and even taint your prayer life so that the prayers that you are praying become accusations. This is why James warned that we ought to speak blessings and not cursings. We are to pray against the enemy and for the person being influenced by them. So even if someone really did something wrong to us, we are still supposed to pray good for them. Blessings and not cursings. We are going we are supposed to pray for their very soul. We should be broken for the person. You can be mad at the enemy who is influencing them, but you better be broken for that person that is being influenced because if you don't have mercy on them, God will not have mercy on you. Envy is a poison in the heart that eventually comes out of the mouth to poison good vineyards. Once it enters into the ears of others, it plants those poison seeds in their hearts and then they become poisoned. That then in turn continue to speak forth and spread those poison seeds. And it just grows and grows and grows until it consumes the whole vineyard and it is ruined. It chokes out the fruitfulness because of a root of envy. 1 Timothy 6 verse 3 says, If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which was according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doubting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmising, perverse disputings of men of corrupt mind, destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. Of such withdraw thyself, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. My friend, if any man speaks anything that is contrary to what is taught in the word of God, that would cause your eyes to be turned towards material things that might serve to plant any root of envy in you, they are teaching that gain is godliness, that you might begin to envy that gain that you might start to want more money, that you might start to want bigger homes, that you might start to want bigger congregations, that you might start to want more attention, that you might start to want more fame, that you might start to want a bigger ministry, that you might start to want a better title, that you might start to want anything of this world. It is driving you to envy. And the Bible says get away from them because it is the enemy knocking at the door trying to get you to give him access because if just that one spirit of envy can get in, he will open the door to every other sin. Recognize the tactic. I don't care how well it comes packaged. It is the enemy. He is a liar. He is coming to steal, kill, and destroy. God says to be content with what you've been given where you are. He will meet you there. And if he's ready for you to have more, then he will give you more. You don't have to fight for it. You don't have to want for it. You don't have to envy those who have it. God, we pray that you open our eyes to the tactic. Lord, that you show us what the enemy is trying to do and how he is trying to remove your truth in us. That he might cause the very spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, to be grieved when we reject the truth of the word for something that we want because of something that we heard from that spirit of envy. He wants us to reject the truth so that he can enter in and become the new root that we might produce the fruit of sin, but it's not happening. In the name of Jesus, we take authority against that spirit of envy. We identify you. We call you out and we cast you out. In the name of Jesus, I pray divine revelation to be released right now into every area of the people's lives that are hearing this and in their family and in their friends and in their churches that the Holy Spirit will shine a light on this spirit, on its tactics, on its unholy agenda in the name of Jesus to poison hearts and destroy vineyards 
vineyards to choke out the fruitfulness thereof. My friend, the word of God says in the parable about the sower that there came a point at which this seed was planted, the word of God, and it grew up into a fruitful tree. It was in good ground. We're not talking about the seed that was carried away by the fowls of the air or the seed that fell on shallow rocky ground and couldn't take root. This seed actually grew into a tree and was producing fruit fruit. It says, but then the thorns came up and choked it out. And the thorns were the deceitfulness of riches and the cares of this life. What do you think those thorns were? It sprung from a root of envy because they saw the riches and they were deceived by them because they saw the cares of this world and it took their eyes off of eternity. It manipulated them to allow sin in and it choked out their fruitfulness and it began with envy. It is a lie from the enemy. It is devilish. According to the word of God, it is a demon. And when it rises up within you, you better deal with it as such. In the name of Jesus, get ye behind me, Satan. I don't agree with you. I'm not going to be manipulated by you. I'm not going to be led astray by you. I'm going to read the word of God and trust the Holy Spirit of truth. No matter what it leads me through, no matter what it costs me, I'm going to do what he tells me to do and I'm going to do it humbly and he shall raise me up. Because Jesus said that we should always esteem others better than self. We should take the lowest seat and he himself will exalt us in due time. That's good enough for me. I call you out, you enemy of the church of Jesus Christ. I take authority over you and I command you to loose the hearts and the minds and expose yourself as you do it. That they would see, understand, and not be deceived anymore by this tactic of the enemy. You are giving up the land of our inheritance. You are giving up the church of Jesus Christ. You will not cause division or competition anymore in the name of Jesus. You are not leading the congregation into sin and into contention with each other or with leadership or with the leading of the spirit of the living God, we will humble ourselves unto the head of the true church, which is Christ. And we will not envy the other members of his body in Jesus name. If you know that there has been a root of envy in your heart, you need to say it out loud right now. I don't agree with you, spirit. You are a liar. You have to go in Jesus name. And Lord, I pray you prick the heart now and cause every offense and bitterness and lie of the enemy to flow out and that you heal up the wounds that the enemy has used to allow this spirit access and you set their eyes on you and set their feet to destiny that they can do what you have called them to do in purity, not being hindered or tainted or thrown off course by this enemy anymore in the name of the Lord. Let it be done today. God, we pray for those who have been attacked and hurt and wounded by this spirit that offense may be set in or fear or discouragement. Lord, that you move to heal up those wounds, that you apply the balm of Gilead to that and that you cause them to be able to go forth and to speak in ministries of healing and forgiveness. That what the enemy meant to destroy them, you will use to save many souls alive. I pray you open blinded eyes and help them to realize that if there is ever a thought of competition, the enemy is at the door and knocking because there is no competition between lighthouses. The body does not compete. It cooperates. And if there is competition, it is evidence that there is another spirit. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear, O Lord God, what your spirit is saying to the church today. And cause us to continue daily to pray that we might not be led astray by it. And for those who have, God, raise up a bride, pure and white, humble and submitted, that cooperates with your spirit. In Jesus' name, we pray. And all the church said, Amen.